Welcome back to Tight Lining, Maryland. We only have about a half hour, but we're gonna fish. Um, I just wrapped up a guide trip with my buddy Luke. So Luke, thanks for coming out today, buddy. Um, I was glad that you and Chris were able to get on some fish. Uh, what I've got out here today, and I'll link it in the description, uh, I've got a Thomas & Thomas uh, contact rod. It's an 11 foot three weight, um, 11 three three weight. I've got the Sage ESN. Uh, on there I have a micro leader that I tie. I'll include a description for the uh, fly shop because on there I've got my flies as well as my, my micro leader that we're using today. Um, we're using 6x tippet. We're using two flies. I'll walk you through how we do that. But uh, ultimately we're just trying to fish for about a half hour, put some fish in the basket. Hopefully it's a couple and uh, see how things go. But it's a beautiful day. Start off in the, the low 30s. It was almost 20, uh, 29 I believe. And um, now it's all the way up into the 50s. So let's get after it. And thanks for tuning back in. I hope you enjoy. Enjoy. All right, so what we're gonna do is I've got on a micro rig We've got about four feet of tippet on that's enough if I were using a single fly to get close to down But because we're gonna use a, a two fly system, we're gonna add on Another two feet cut that off So we got our two feet extra of tippet to give us just a little bit of extra length. We're gonna fish a tandem nymph rig because we got good depth here. We got good flows. We've already got on a stretch of about four feet. So let's get this right over here. All right, we're gonna take our line. And this is again about four feet of 6X fluorocarbon tippet. We're gonna leave about a five inch strip excess, just a couple inch overlap. That way I know which one's the long one, which one's the short one. And in essence, the long one's always my main running line, the original tippet, and the short one is gonna be my uh, added in section. We're gonna do a double surgeons. Pinch that to hold it down, pull away. It's gonna give us a nice long five to six inch tag. And then the short guy is the one I can remove because that's gonna be the weakest part. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the heavy pheasant tail with that orange bead down here and we're going to put a um, Tasmanian devil up top. So let me do that real quick. All right. So at this point, we're ready to fish. I've got on a micro leader that I tie and they're on my website. I've got on a Tasmanian devil, which also I tie and put on my website. And then I got one that's more experimental. Uh, it's just a regular pheasant tail but with the orange bead and with these elevated flows. I'm hoping that it just gives them a little bit better sight of that pheasant tail, not that they need a ton of it. So we're gonna fish right off of this ledge. We're gonna get nice slow drifts right down through here. Hopefully pick off a fish or two in this water that otherwise is usually too shallow to hold fish. And see if we can't get just one or two eats right here in front of our feet. But sadly, it also lacks a little bit of flow. So you have to be careful on how you do it. So this, this area right here has got much more of it. Slide it down in through the run. Come down, down, down. We're going to sink the cider a little bit just to make sure we're getting down. Yep, that's a good, good little fish. Don't know what we got, but we got one. Oh, and another one came up and ran after it. All right. So that one's on the, uh, that one's on the, Tasmanian devil Get that out of his mouth He had another friend come up for it, but one little one to the basket For a half hour's worth of work. I'll take one fish after two or three drifts But I got to be careful about my feet because I'm kicking up sediment and I don't want to ruin the hole Just after walking into it because the fish will pick up on that So let's get this fly unkinked but always good to always good to get on the board. Builds a little bit of confidence to get one in the first three or four drifts. That one's actually, I guess, two. But just had to sink that cider ever so slightly. Again, we've got on size 14, just to be clear. Um, size 14 flies for both. Those are 3.2 millimeter beads. We want to have the weight to get down. We're going to kick it back out into the, the run. Get nice and vertical on it. Allow those things to get down. We're gonna extend that drift. I can feel it. Tick, 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 tick. The Tasmanian Devil's got a little bit of a CDC collar, so you can even extend your drift sometimes and basically uh, swing them. So there we go. Drift number four. 
down in. Boom, 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 little tap. Okay, let's try it again. Right off of this ledge, you just got a good structure, almost like a shelf where it just drops off. Ah, that was something. Slide out and over just a little bit. Still gonna fish this ledge, and we're gonna work out into the middle. So I typically work from inside to out. There we go. A little bit better fish. I think, find out. There we go, Tasmanian Devil number two. Now, I will say that as much as this video was intended to try to catch them on this pheasant tail, the other piece is too, sometimes fishing that tandem rig is a, a double-edged sword. Good fish, nice average one, maybe nine, 10 inches. Um, so, what I meant by that when I when I mentioned it is I like fishing too because A, the weight, that's a huge component of why you should be fishing too. Uh, makes a world of difference in your, your ability to get down and get in the strike zone. But B, um, that orange bead, you never know. Even if they're not eating that particular fly, the fact that A, it's anchoring your system down in there, and B, it could be drawing those fish in, and then they opt to go for something like that Tasmanian Devil that uh, you know has hairs ear quality uh you know components of it it could be that they're interested in that so sometimes you know your first fly or your anchor fly can be what draws them in and the second fly is what they ultimately eat i don't know i'm just limited for time but i know i want to fish this inside shelf it's just got just enough depth and it's a little bit slower good character so i still think we can pick up a fish or two over here Definitely have much better control of that system. There we go. Little guy hit the flip stick on that Tasmanian Devil. Right in front of me. Just a matter of a couple feet up. Come on, bud. Don't tangle us all up. There we go. So they're definitely... Definitely seeming to key into that. I know that the goal was to catch them on the on the orange one, but that's okay. Just had a small hesitation there. Looked like it could have been a fish, could have been bottom. We'll never know. Anything at all that's unnatural, you got to settle on all of it, and you got to be not only diligent about that set, but really give it a good one. You know, got to avoid the dreaded check set where you just kind of lift up and try to figure out what's going on down there. You know, give give everything a good set, just like that. That guy is giving me a good run for my money. Don't know what he's on yet. Looks like he's on the Tasmanian Devil again. So that's four fish for that fly. Four wild brownies to the net. About 10 minutes, that ain't bad. So we found our key to success, that's for sure. All right, so that's four fish in a matter of, I don't know, 10 minutes and 20 drifts. That ain't bad. <laughs> Not every day is like that, but we're into the middle of the day where it's you know, now roughly three o'clock. Um, it's a bad cast, bad drift, but um, it's three o'clock, good bug life. Water temps have probably jumped a good five degrees since the start of the day. Um, you know, that always gives you a leg up on the day of fishing, that's for sure. This one kind of goes from cold to hot right there in the sunlight. So it's a unique little spot. But we're just fishing again, two size 14 flies. Got a Tasmanian Devil on the uh, tag. 
and then our orange pheasant tail on the anchor or point fly okay nothing so we're gonna try one more spot right here then we're gonna call it quits get out of here just try to pick up one more fish we got this run that then we're done So this run, the way it works, so we have amazing flows right now, down through here, soft spot through there, soft spot over there. Uh, with the way it's been going, if we don't pick up a fish in here, shame on us. So here we go, first, first cast through. I'm a little bit further left than probably what I should have been. We can ease up the distance, shorten up the stroke a little bit. Should be a fish right in there. That is a beautiful soft scene. Right in here. Come on. Gotta be one home. Gotta be. It's too good. It's just too good. Question is, are we good enough? Are we good enough? We're gonna find out, because we're gonna run another five to 10 drifts through. Definitely ticking the bottom a little bit. That's a good thing. We don't want to tick it every time. I definitely want to occasionally tick. We can always elevate the cider some. Bottom more hung. There we go. Really get out over there. Fish that rocky shoal. There he is. What did I say? I said there's got to be one in here. Just were we good enough? And luckily that time we were good enough. Just good enough. Decent fish too. So we're just keeping side pressure on. That fish is just staying in the current. We're not in a rush. We're not doing anything. I talked about fighting fish today while we were out on the guide trip. You know, keeping that a nice solid 10 feet upstream. All of these fish have been on that tag. So minor inconvenience in terms of they'll be highest in the column. But that's a that's a quality fish. Just gotta turn that head. Come on, bud. There he is. That's a good fish. That's your right in the top of the lip. There he is. Nice probably 12, 13 inch brown. And there he goes. Back to the depths. Tasmanian devil for the win. That's uh five fish in 20. 20 no more than 25 minutes. I don't even know if it's been 20. Um, but this is fun. This is the way, this is the way nymphing should be when you when you dial it in and you finally figure that you got it, you know, your system honed in, you're hitting the right spots, you're getting clean drifts. You should be able to get fish like this in all the likely holes. Not quite. And I don't want to wait upstream. So we're going to try to check the time. I feel like I may have just a couple minutes. And if I do, then I'm going to fish the backside of this run for just two or three more. But we got to get moving. Yep, I got two minutes at best. So let's put maybe five or ten good clean drifts right down here. And then we're going to call it a day with or without a fish. So I would take that as a, a success. A half hour, five fish. I think most people will be happy. I usually tell people if you're catching six to 10 fish in an hour, you're having a great day. So five and a half hour puts you on pace for 10. I would argue that's cooking with gas. So not bad, not bad. The only downfall of going downstream and doing it this way is we're probably gonna disrupt some of the, the fish in the water as we slide down. They're gonna see us, feel us, and hear us coming. But that's all right. Just do the best you can. It's 
So we're gonna tuck our back cast over here. Probably gonna need to sink some cider because it's real deep through here. There he is. Tasmanian Devil for the win. Man, it's another brownie on the Tasmanian Devil. And none of them popped off. I say that, and you probably will, but crazy. So we're going to end on a fish, and that's going to be it for tight lining Maryland. We'll take uh, six fish in a half hour of work and call that a, a huge success and a fun, fun day to be on the water. So don't get to fish often. I appreciate everybody sticking around to still watch my videos and support. Um, if you ever need flies like the Tasmanian Devil, don't hesitate. So that's going to wrap it up for Tailani, Maryland. I really appreciate it if you're still sticking with me watching my videos. I wish I could do more. I mean, hey, coming out here and catching six fish in a half hour, uh, that's about all you can ask for. And uh, I wish I could do it more often for you guys. But I hope that you learned something about, you know, why I put on the amount of tip that I did, the exact fly sizes, uh, the types of water I was aiming for, um, you know, where those fish were and how I could kind of almost call it out. When you really figure things out, you can start to do those things. Um, again, if I can do anything to help you, whether it's, you know, you have a question, shoot me a message leave a comment um, if you want to sign up for a guided trip if you're in the mid-atlantic area or do one of the clinics which i would highly advise that you get started on um, we can get you into this and get you started uh, but anything i can do to help let me know but for everybody that's been out there supporting me thank you i appreciate you and tight lines the next time you hit the stream